Wound mask extraction. What is it? You're going to do a lot of it. Essentially, over here on the left, I have this cobblestone material I built where I laid over this mossy layer, this swirly, interesting moss. I actually built these both as two entire materials, so you can imagine a sphere of both. There's one that's all cobblestone, one that's completely moss, and I'm just doing a height lerp to blend between them. That's easy enough. That handles your normal and height channels no problem, but you're going to need to be able to extract a mask of where the moss is and where it isn't. I've kind of illustrated it here by coloring all the moss red. You're going to need that mask to drive different colors for where you want the moss to be, different roughness, all sorts of different things. It's really useful to have in your back pocket. I'm going to show you my method of doing it. I think it's pretty flexible. It's fast. You have a ton of options. And I actually think it's just better than the height blend generally. Um, so yeah, let's get to the graph. And so here's just that graph of the cobblestones on their own. I haven't done any blending in here except for this layer of dirt in the initial graph. But in this case, we're going to blend on a whole other second material. Um, in this case, a, a moss I had built that I liked. It, this is something you're going to want to do all the time, just to blend between two height maps, whether they're different layers, like a moss layer and a dirt layer or a stone layer in these cases. You, it's also You'll also do the same thing, blending just like discrete elements of a height map onto another height map. So things like pebbles or stones, twigs. If you're working on something with more hard surface, it could be like bolts or vents or kind of just greebly sci-fi stuff. And you'll often be doing something similar to this. So it's a type of blending you should probably get used to. If I show you it here, this graph is just the thing that generates the cobblestone texture. We can get into something like this at some point for sure later on. And then this is the moss I built. So at the end, I have these two height maps. One for the moss, one for the cobblestone, and I'd like to blend them on top of each other. So in Substance, you can use this height blend node. I don't really like using this. It's got some interesting options that I do like, and I'll occasionally use it. I just find that it's oftentimes a little janky, and for that reason, I'm not like a super big fan of it. But for some people, they like this a lot, and it works fine. And basically, the way this works is you have your, your bottom layer, your top layer, and then you can offset the height, right? So I'm just pushing the moss down. And then this becomes what allows you to blend these together. And now you can't see the moss in the albedo. And that's just because it's only blending the height in the normal right now. You do get this mask. And I could pull that mask off to use as the blend. I just don't like this one for the most part. And I would need to invert this like this. I'm just not a big fan of it. I think it can have a little bit of weird jankiness. You'd have to scan it to get this right. You have to play with some settings in here. I just don't like it. it like I said, for some people, they love this. That's great. I'm just showing you an alternative because there's also some things that this can do, or sorry, this can't do that the method I'm showing to you can do. So it's, it's just another option to have, which is always nice. Usually is this the case in designer. There's a bunch of different ways to slice something. That's a double-edged sword sometimes, but it's just happy. I'm always happy to have more ways of doing something. So we'll show you this way. So the way I would do this is just blend these over with a max blending mode. The order in this case doesn't really matter. It's like this, right? The max blending mode. We'll do a video on blend modes at some point. We, we should for sure. It's definitely in my course. Um, but all that's happening here is the brighter of the two pixels is showing up. So obviously here where the base texture is quite dark, it's going to try to select for the brighter texture and they're just being blended on top of each other. So this becomes our blended height and you'll see our normal and height information go off, which is great. And we can make the adjustments like that height offset that we had on the height blend by just leveling one of these. So I like using the range for this. I want full range for sure, but then I'll just use the position to lower my moss, right? So the lower this value, the less moss I'll get because the texture gets darker and doesn't sort on top of the brighter texture of the cobblestones. So this kind of just becomes your moss amount slider, if you will. The big thing we need to do now though, is generate that mask that we were interested in. So I'm actually gonna put these in the same order as the height map. But this doesn't change the result on a max, right? Whether we invert these inputs or not. 
Um, but for the sake of clarity here, I'm just going to make this my input B and this my input A, because A is going on top of B, we'll say. The big question is, how do we get that mask out? We, we want a, um, I'm going to make this a bit darker. We want a mask of where the blending actually occurred, right? We're going to go into another graph to show this off on something a bit more simple because there's a lot going on in here. It's a bit harder to see. So in this graph up here, I've just started with our basic AO normal setup that everyone should be used to at this point. It's not that complicated here. But I'm going to make, I can turn on calf locks for sure. I'm going to make a square, bevel this, just get a little pyramid light shape. So this could be like a sheet of metal, like a plate of metal or something, right? Or like a chunk of wood, whatever you want. And I'm going to level this just so that it's not as bright as it possibly can be. So it's a bit darker. And let's just make a quick bolt. So I'll turn this down. I'll make another square. I'll make like a Phillips head bolt here. I'll just put it like this. Bevel him. And we'll transform this 90 degrees. Max them together. Just to make that little Phillips head and I'll subtract from the original shape. Just a little bit. Cool. Perfect. So it's very similar. We have our layer B, right? Which is our bottom layer, our, our metal plate. And I'll put this on top and we'll use like the max blending mode, which people should be pretty familiar with. And I'm just going to make the, the bolt a bit smaller. Cool. We don't need to subtract it that deep, I don't think. So there's your simple height map. Again, something you're going to want to do all the time. And I'll just plug everything in. I'm holding shift to drag all of those nodes over. And there we go. Let's also just displace this a bit so that we have some height to look at. So this actually works fairly well. And getting a mask out of it in this case, I don't know, my height plugged in. There you go. Making a mask in this situation is actually pretty easy because, well, it's even easier if, let's just say we added it instead of max, right? We'd have to drag it down so it's a bit more subtle. Like this, and I'll shrink the bolt a bit. So in the event where you've added this height map on, making a mask of where, because what we want is, let's make our metal a kind of like desaturated blue. Metals are quite bright. There we go, looks fine. And I'm gonna make our AO a lot more intense for a second, just so you can see the shape a bit better. There you go. So making a mask of where the bolt is, let's say we wanna make our bolt like a brass color. It's something you're gonna to wanna to do all the time is just separate elements of a height map out like this. So in this case here, because the extent of this shape, because we're adding it, fully matches this shape, right? Like the this shape ends right where the shape ends in the final result, right? In C, right? Where they've, they've been combined together. It's actually really easy to make a mask of this. We just need to scan this, right? Or level, right? You could also take the, the histogram scan there is doing the same thing as just taking a level and moving your level out black or your level out white all the way to black. I'm just doing the histogram scan because it's one slider and I just, it feels better. So this just becomes our mask for where we blend between our two colors. Easy, right? Very easy if you're using like an add or a subtract blending mode. If you were subtracting, it would be just as simple, right? Catches it nice. The issue is when you want to use max and why you might want to use max is just, you know, let's say we moved this bolt Right, we'll go, I'll get a free transform node and move this bolt over onto the corner of our plate here. Now add doesn't really make sense. It's not the most helpful thing in the world here. I'll shrink the bolt a bit. 
right? Because we get we can see the shape of the plate under the bolt because all of the values of the bolt of the plate are just being added to, right? They're just popping up. They're being offset up in the height map. A max blending mode would do a better job here of blending. And we would just need to darken this a bit. Something like that. See, we keep the shape and we have this more interesting blend here. It stays round. Max is generally what you'll want for this. Right? Because it's just the blending is a lot more, uh, it takes into account the values of the, the height map beneath it. The only problem is the screw, the bolt is shrank a little. I make it a bit bigger. And making a mask of this is now challenging on account of the fact that the size of the original bolt has changed in the final result, right? You can see it shrink. Here it's quite big, it ends there. Here it's shrunk, right? And that's just because all of like these values are darker than the plate they're going on top of. So the plate gets sorted on top of them, right? Because of the max blending mode. So we can't really make a mask of this very effectively especially if it's straddling an edge like this. I'll see a lot of students try to like finesse this by like histogram scanning this, but only a little bit of it, right? Which is really tricky. It's actually possible for the most part to get this right, right? We, I'll turn the contrast up and you'll see that it's just offset. It doesn't work very well, right? Because it doesn't understand that the bolt is shrunk because of the max blending mode. Some people, they'll try to do it to this texture, right? And this is even more of a nightmare, <laughs> right? It just doesn't work. So there's a much better way of extracting that mask. I'll just go back to our blue. So to do that, the way to think about it is to think about it as a piece of math, really, because we're looking for really the difference between this and this right? What occurred? And, and that will get like a really another word for difference is subtract. Another word for subtraction is difference, right? If you have five and you subtract two, the difference is three. That's a helpful way to think about it. So if we were to call these, I'll just make a comment quick. We'll call this A and we'll call this B, right? Our bottom and our top input. And we'll call this C, right? The result of A and B. What we're looking for is where A is. So to get A in this case, we're going to take C because A and B together made C, right? Two plus three equals five. So if we pretend C is five, if we just subtract three, we'll be left with two, right? So all we need to do is take our B, or sorry, our, um, our C and subtract B from it. And that's the difference, right? This you could call C minus B. equals A. And that is that is basically a map, it's, it's just a texture of what's different between this and this. And now really easily, all we have to do is scan this. And this becomes our mask. Very easy, right? And it's perfect. I like this method a lot. As we move this around, the mask updates. I'd say I use this on essentially every graph I've ever made. <laughs> it's really, really helpful. Again, the height blend can do this if you're willing to play by its rules and you want to mess around with the mask afterwards. Again, a lot of people like it. It's totally valid. For a lot of people, it's the thing that works the best. What it can't do very well, what you can do with this method is actually use min instead of max. You have to change the math of the mask a little bit, but it's essentially the same idea. So let's just go back to our blue for a minute. So let's pretend instead of that bolt, 
let's pretend we had like a like a cut in the metal something like this and we're going to invert this and you have to pay attention to the fact that we inverted it because it's going to be important in a second but if we invert this that's our new a and we do a min here now we're cutting away at our shape which is really neat there we get this cool crack and maybe i'll just rotate this so you get this cool slice right on the corner that looks fun you really shouldn't be transforming this into place i'm just doing it for the example later on in another video we'll talk about how to place these procedurally in the right spots but this is cool we can we and we need a mask of this right like say we want to make the cracks brighter right we want to make them a higher luminance so they stand out more it's the same basic premise but instead of taking b and subtracting it from c we're going to take c and subtracting it from b right we're just going to reverse the order of that subtraction so we're going to just do it the other order we're going to take c subtract it from b and there's our mask so it's slightly different right whereas before we were subtracting b from c now we're subtracting c from b so now this guy goes b minus c equals a just like that and now the same thing we scan this guy and there's our mask for where the blend happens and we'll make this like a really bright low saturation kind of greeny blue teal it would be another word for that i swear i'm a texture artist cool so there you go that's what i like about this method is you can kind of do it via subtraction not just addition which i find really helpful it's very quick to do also i think you have a lot of control like i said using every graph i make it's it's super powerful so one last thing is we'll hop back into that original cobblestone graph and do the blending in here just as a way of going over it again so again we have our height map a our moss height map b our cobblestone and then c them combined together so we're just going to take um we need a right so we need to take c and subtract b from it so we put c we subtract b we scan this and that's our mask goes up here i'll turn the moss back on it's perfect i wanted to show it first in that other graph because it's a bit more complicated in here and hopefully the other graph is like a clear example of how it's actually working and here you can just see a sort of final use case so that brings us to the end for this video uh, i'd like to just remind everyone to please do all the typical youtube guy stuff uh, like subscribe especially i have a big backlog of stuff to get to so i'll just be continuing to pump these out as long as people are finding them helpful and so far the reception's been really great so i'll just keep going we'll see you guys later